29th pick, uh, the Seattle Seahawks took LJ Collier. Now, LJ Collier was a guy, when I first initially watched him, I really liked him. You know, he's bigger, 6'4", uh, you know, 270, 280 pounds. He showed good lateral quickness, change of direction ability. Uh, but the more and more I watched him, he just seemed to me like he'd be a guy that would flash potential. He would flash the ability to make plays. It was just wasn't very consistent. And so he ended up being, I kind of had him, you know, like a high second round grade. Um, I know I had mocked him to the New England Patriots at one point in the first round because I thought he could be their replacement to Trey Flowers. But the more I watched him, I kind of fell into him maybe being a late round two, early round three type of prospect. Now, Seattle takes him at 29. Shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Seattle kind of does things their own way, and I think we a lot of people give him passes because Daniel, uh, uh, John Schneider, uh, their GM, has had so much success in the past. You know, they took you know, the Bobby Wagners and the Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellors, you know, the whole Legion of Boom, Russell Wilson in the third round, and they built this team off of a lot of good draft picks. And their first round picks, in all reality, even when they were hitting on all those guys in the third, second, third, fourth rounds, their first round picks were a little questionable. You know, remember they took Bruce Irving, you know, in the top 20 or, you know, in the top 25. And that surprised a lot of people. You know, Jermaine Effetti was a, was a top, I was a first round pick. Their first round picks haven't really hit. So it shouldn't surprise us. And, and here's a team that also went in with five picks. You know, a week before the draft, they traded away Frank Clark, which this pick kind of comes into that play. They traded away Frank Clark. Now they got six picks, two first-rounders. They ended up kind of trading back a couple times, and they ended up with like 10 picks. So um, John Schneider really did a great job of saying, hey, we only coming in with four. Now we're, we're ended up leaving with 10 prospects. So that's, that's pretty remarkable to say the least. But with AJ, LJ Collier... Once again, they needed a replacement for Frank Clark. And you would think, okay, do they want a bendy guy, a more speed pass rusher? And that's one of the reasons I didn't like Collier. I'm like, well, they don't really need that base defensive end. Collier's going to kind of play at the five technique, play on the strong side where the tight end is going to be. Whereas the, what they could use is that weak side guy who's going to line up about the seven or the nine technique and come flying off. They really don't have anybody like that on their roster. But, when you, once again, when you sit back and look, who, who could they have taken? If they, if they didn't take LJ Collier, who are the other guys that they would have taken? The next four pass rushers, the edge defenders that went off the board, we had Ben Baganu. Baganu I butchered that. Uh, his LJ Collier's teaming at TCU. He went in the second round of the Colts. I wasn't a big fan of him. I thought he went higher than he should have been. So, and I had LJ Collier ranked higher. Uh, and then it was the third round. You had Josh, uh, Zach Allen uh, going to the, the Cardinals. You had Ja'Kai Polite in the third round going to the Jets. And you had Chase Winovich going in the third round to the uh, New England Patriots. Would, would LJ Collier be a better pick than those guys? And probably yes. You know, Ja'Kai Polite... Talent-wise, would be a perfect fit for what Seattle wants to do, but it seems like he's a mess off the field. Chase Winovich, I grew to like him more this past season, but I think LJ Collier has a little bit more upside. So as much as I dislike this pick, I think for what they wanted to do, they probably made the right decision. And then just today, and I'm recording this Wednesday night, the Seahawks also sign Ezekiel Ansah. So Ansah is probably going to be that weak side defensive end where LJ Collier can kind of provide, the, be that um, Michael, Michael Bennett type of base defensive end. Maybe they kind of slide him a little bit inside. So I'm still not a huge fan of this pick. You know, maybe they could have got a better, a different position. But based off of edge defender, yeah, they probably made the right choice taking LJ Collier here.